Well, it seems regardless of the scare, cosmetic surgery is still popular. If you're of a squeamish disposition, I suggest you go and put the kettle on now. As I said, I spoke to Joanna Berry and Penny Avis last week, and I asked them why it remains so popular. I think it's a factor of the... Uh the media that's around us and that people get to see all the time images of people and women um, showing them what they should look like, which I think at some level makes women conscious of what they look like and very aware of the fact these things are available. I think the other factor that's driving it is um, it's becoming much more mainstream for young people today. It's much less unusual or, or um, frowned upon in their view than I think for some of the older people. Joe, you're a lawyer in a previous incarnation. What did you yeah. make of the implant debacle, the, the scare that we've heard of recently in the national news? Well, I think it's. Um, I think for the poor women involved, it must be very frightening because um, these are women who didn't necessarily. I mean, Penny and I did discover lots of scare stories when we were researching our book series. Um, but they quite often the worst scare stories were surrounding people who had perhaps gone abroad for surgery, who quite frankly had probably cut costs and chosen providers, you know, on the basis of cheapness rather than you know their reputation. Whereas the women involved in this scandal seem to have, you know, to a degree, done their homework. They've gone to mainstream providers that, you know, one would have thought you could have confidence in. And I think to find themselves in this situation now where they're probably going to have to pay to have these implants removed and, and pay a great deal more if they want to have them replaced with something safer, I think must be really quite frightening for them. Do you think the trend for cosmetic surgery is going to be decreasing now, particularly as far as breast implant operations are concerned, given the scare? Um, I think we might see a temporary dip, certainly through the next few months, while all of the um, press is surrounding this. I would be surprised if we saw a long-term decline in the uh, in the growth of the industry. It is so entrenched, um, and um, and the breadth of procedures being offered is so wide. Although breast augmentation is one of the most popular, in fact, it's the most popular in the UK, the breadth of procedures being offered that don't involve necessarily having something implanted um, is so broad that people might shy away from that, but there will be other things that they'll be having done instead. You're both famously the authors of Never Mind the Botox, a oh, yeah. four-book series <laughs> providing, it says here, a behind-the-scenes look at a private, cosmetic, a private cosmetic surgery on Harley Street under financial investigation before being sold to an American company for billions. This is a novel, isn't it? It That's is, yes. It's actually a four-book series, and it's about four professional women a lawyer, a corporate financier, a cosmetic surgeon and a banker, all of whom are working on the sale of this cosmetic surgery business. And in the course of working on the sale, they uncover some strange goings on at the clinic and some intrigue and scandal. Now, I know that the four book series is currently being uh, made or developed for a Sex in the City style TV series, which is fantastic. Congratulations on that, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. You must have done, however, an awful lot of research for these books. As far as your research is concerned, what was the most shocking thing that you came across? I think the shock most shocking thing was some very, very odd procedures and also some procedures that most people would think are probably not necessary. Um, so, for example, there is a very, very long list of things you can have done to your feet. Um, as a, what's called a tobesity shopping list, where you can have liposuction to make your toes narrower, you can have your toes broken and um, made shorter if you think they're too long, you can have Botox into the soles of your feet and into the arches to help you um, wear high shoes for a long time. Um, we also found people doing things to look like animals. Um, so we found examples of a man who'd had implants imported into his forehead so he could look like a lizard. Um, <laughs> really were oh, quite... Oh, no! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so really, really just quite bizarre. Why yeah. would anyone want to do that? Uh, I... Uh, quite. I mean, we, we were sort of... We, all we could do but sort of was, was wonder and laugh, really, at some of it. What about some of the horror stories as far as the actual surgery is concerned? What have you seen or learnt about, ladies? I, th I think the worst ones we've learnt about are probably, as I indicated earlier, people who perhaps have gone abroad um, because it's cheaper, you know, even despite the airfare, it's still cheaper to go to some of these places abroad and have a breast augmentation or some other, or, or sometimes things like liposuction or tummy tucks, and then come back on a plane far too soon without any kind of aftercare or recovery time and people who are going back to work and you know they're bleeding at work they've got open wounds that haven't healed properly they may have got infections and I think some of those stories you know are quite sad and, and quite shocking really that that people have sort of 
have, have chosen the, their provider on the basis of price, but actually haven't really thought that some of these operations are actually made to surgery. And if you were having them for non sort of cosmetic reasons, you'd be you'd probably be still in hospital for several days getting proper aftercare afterwards. Can you tell us, like it is, can you give us some examples of, of some things that have gone wrong, things that you've seen, photographs, etc.? We saw some photographs of some people who'd had um, things into their faces, that so fillers and that sort of thing, where they'd gone um, hard. Um, and so you'd ended up, one lady had ended up with peas, little peas all around the underside of her eyes, which then had to be cut out. Um, so she'd gone from wanting to not have wrinkles to ending up with lots and lots of little scars under her eyes where these pea sized pieces of, um, I think it was some sort of silicon filler, had gone hard and gone wrong. Um, and so ended up looking much worse than when she'd started. Has cosmetic surgery been going long enough for us to realise the long-term implications? I'm thinking here, in, in, I'm thinking about Botox in particular. It's botulism. Do we know that, that those ladies injecting botulism into their system, albeit in small amounts, aren't going to have severe problems in the long term? Have tests been carried out? And if so, how? Well, I, th I think the thing about Botox, which, which you always hear, is that it has actually been used medically for quite a long time. It's been used in the past for people who suffered from strokes or cerebral palsy or people who have tics or twitches. And that's how, actually, initially people discovered that actually it, it helped stop form wrinkles because by paralysing the muscle, you're stopping that movement and the creation of, of wrinkles. So it has been used a lot longer, you know, as a medical um, device, as it were, rather than as a cosmetic one. But I, I think you're right. I think there has to be some concern because even in terms of the use of stroke victims and people with cerebral palsy, we're still only talking about probably one generation of people. So, you know, you do wonder whether there might be something being stored up. Having said that, it's a tiny, tiny amount, a fractional amount that's being used. And the system, one system presumably gradually disposes of it because the effect of the Botox wears off. Is it true that some celebrities have ribs removed to make themselves look thinner? We never actually found proof of that story. We found that story all over the place, rumoured. Um, the number of people who'd been rumoured to have their ribs removed. And we actually found chat rooms of people asking where it could be done and some sort of, shall we say, South American, um, very obscure non-official looking people who are perhaps offering to do it we didn't actually find a mainstream clinic that offered it um, and what you actually find is a lot as joe was saying about the um the botox a lot of the procedures that are being done have come from an extension of what's already been done in the medical world so you know people have had ribs removed for surgical reasons they have their legs um lengthened if you've got one leg you know, shorter or longer than the other, then it's, you know, and it's very bad, then one leg might be lengthened. Well, that's now been translated into leg lengthening surgery for both legs to become taller. Um, um, so I, I think you, it's from the mainstream medical practice that a lot of these cosmetic surgery ideas do develop. And did you look into cosmetic surgery for men as well? Well, it's definitely becoming more common when we did. I mean, all the same procedures are available for men as are available for women. Obviously, some are more popular than others. But, um, you know, men also can have boob jobs or move jobs, as they're known, and they tend to be reduction of, of fat in the sort of breast area. But it, we, we, we definitely discovered that men are... I suppose, like women, becoming much more receptive to it, and the instance of males actually having surgery is definitely on the increase. They're having specific parts of their body enlarged in some cases <laughs> as well, aren't they? But the less said about that on morning radio, the better, I think. Absolutely.